I'm going to show you how to take apart your Nintendo Switch OLED edition and show how to replace various things inside it, like the battery, the fan, the charging rails, the speakers, the thermal paste, and the board that has the cartridge and SD card slots on it. Near the end, I'll show you how to put everything back together. I'll be doing this on the model HEG001, and like I said, it's the OLED model. I already made a separate but similar video for the non-OLED model, HAC001. Be warned that there's always an element of risk when working on compact electronic devices. Ribbon cables can break, screws can become stripped, plastic parts can break, so please proceed it your own risk. First, turn the system off, remove both Joy-Cons, and remove any games or SD cards that you have inserted. You'll need a small Phillips screwdriver size 000 and a tri-wing screwdriver size 0. I recommend you set up a way to organize your screws ahead of time. There's a lot of them in this process, and there's a lot of different types of them. Place the system face down on something soft so you don't scratch the screen. Also be aware that it's easy to strip the screws on a switch, especially the outside ones. I recommend cleaning all those outside ones with a little bit of alcohol, and also tap on them. Make sure the alcohol dries all the way up before attempting to turn them. Lift up the stand and remove these two screws using the tri-wing screwdriver. Those are the only two screws that need the tri-wing. All the other screws in this video take the Phillips. Remove these two on the bottom and this one at the top. And on each side, remove the one that's close to the edge here. Be warned that screw is tight because it goes through metal and therefore it's more susceptible to getting stripped Remove the back panel. You kind of have to work the edges until more and more of it starts to separate. If you only wish to clean the fan, you have a good amount of access to do it from this point. Just blow on it. Later though, I'll be showing how to remove the fan entirely. So at that point, you'll have more access to clean it. In order to do anything else, we need to remove the metal shielding. The thing is, it has Wi-Fi antennas taped down onto it. You'll have to peel away part of that tape and free those wires. The larger pieces of tape are easy to pull back, but the smaller ones end up getting a little bit damaged, at least they did for me. Once the wires are free, they need to be unsnapped from the middle here. I find it best to pry those connectors from multiple sides using something plastic. I advise against using something metal because you could scratch the circuit board that's down there. Proceed to move the wires away carefully and just let them dangle off to the side. Now remove these screws. Then remove the metal shield. Just know that the Wi-Fi wire is going to stay attached to the shield on the upper right here. So you need to keep the shield close. There is a way to pull that wire out of the hooks that are holding it down so that you can separate the shield. But it's in there pretty tight. So I recommend you just leave it as is. Plus, there's no need to separate that shield for the things we're about to do. If you're finding this video helpful so far, feel free to hit that like button. Note that there's some thermal paste on the shield right here, and that part rested right here where there's more thermal paste. I'll be talking more about it in a few moments, but I just wanted to point it out so that you don't smear it all over yourself. We are going to remove the battery now. Obviously, you need to do that if you're going to replace it. However, I also recommend at least disconnecting it if you're going to be working on other things within the switch. You don't want current running through the device while you're working on it. First, disconnect the connector by pulling up on the white part. Be gentle and patient with it. You don't want to pull the whole connector off the board. Next, you need to pry up the battery. It has a sticky adhesive on the back of it. I recommend putting a little bit of heat on the battery with a hair dryer or a heat gun at a low setting like I'm doing here. Keep in mind the adhesive is in the middle of it. After I warmed it up, 
I stuck a plastic tool underneath it and pried it up, working on multiple sides of it, and eventually it came out. I'm going to continue to remove things in case you need to replace them. You may be only interested in replacing one thing, but you may not want to skip around the video because the way these things are stacked inside the switch, you kind of need to remove certain things in order to get to other things. It's just the way it's designed. So the next thing I'm going to remove is the this black board here, which houses the headphone jack, the cartridge slot, and the SD card reader all in one place. It's actually pretty simple. All you need to do is remove this one screw here, which Nintendo uncleverly hid under a little piece of tape. So take that piece of tape off, then pull up on the board and it'll snap right out. Here's the text that's printed on mine in case you need it. Next, I'm going to show how to remove the charging rails that are on the sides. Each one has a ribbon cable and each one of those has a locking tab on the connector that has to be flipped up before you pull the cable out of it. Then remove these two screws. Once again, they can be tight. Because of the thick metal they are screwed into, I'm only going to do the one on the left side. But keep in mind, this thing is face down, so the one I'm actually removing is the one on the right. This is what the rail looks like when it's out, and you can just swap it out with another one. But if you want to, you can take it apart a little bit more. There is a silver pin holding it together. If you poke something into that pin and push it out, you can separate the little piece that charges the Joy-Con from it, like this. Even though I'm not removing the rail that's on the right, I'll point out that the ribbon cable for that one is longer and connects to the board right here. Next, I'll talk about replacing the thermal paste. I've already showed the splotch that's right here. Replacing that is pretty self-explanatory. You just remove the old and add the new. Now, various people online recommend that you replace it with a thick type of thermal paste due to how large the gap is that it needs to cover. Just know that there's also thermal paste under this heat sink here. And that heat sink is attached to the pipe right here. To remove it, remove these three screws here then pull the pipe upward. It's very bendable, so keep that in mind as you're removing it. You can now replace the old paste if you need to. Notice it's the standard silver colored paste that you see in PCs, while the kind on the outside is reddish. Next, I'm going to show you how to remove the fan. It's pretty easy. Disconnect this ribbon here. That connector also has a locking tab that needs to be flipped upward. Then remove these three screws and then just pull the fan out. If you still want to clean it, you now have more access to do that since you have an additional opening. I want to point out this cable here, which leads to the power and volume buttons. So this is yet another replaceable part. I'm going to leave mine in place. Next, I'm going to show you how to remove the entire green circuit board that you see in front of you in case you want to replace it or work on it. This also allows access to one of the speakers underneath it. Removing the board is a bit tricky. You have five screws, but you also have a lot of ribbon cables to disconnect. Some may already be disconnected depending on what things you've already removed in this video. I'll say more about a couple of those connectors. There's a giant one here that leads to the OLED screen. It has a locking tab that needs to be opened up. There's also two tiny and tight connectors that lead to the speakers. Those do not have a locking mechanism. You need to grab that tiny part and pull it out of the connector. You are now ready to pull the board out, but as you do it, you need to be mindful of the charging port that's on the bottom. It's sticking through the black plastic. You need to pull downward 
on that black plastic as you pull the board out. Unfortunately, that part was out of the range of the camera as I did it, but like I said, I'm pulling down on the black plastic to make sure that port gets free of it, if that makes sense. And there it is. There's one last thing I wanna show you how to remove before I show you how to put everything back together again, and that's the speakers. They have covers on them that need removed before you can get to them. Each of those covers is held on by one screw. Open the cover like a book, like this. There's something attached to it on the left side. It's like a rubbery substance or something. I wasn't sure what that was and I didn't want to mess with it, so I just left it attached. Before you remove the speaker itself, be aware that the wires that are going to it are squeezed into a slitted piece of rubber. So you need to work that wire through that slit and be aware that the speaker has adhesive on the back of it. So you have to pry it out. I'm using a plastic tool to do it, but once again, it's out of range of the camera here. Sorry about that. And there you go. I'm not removing the other speaker, but the process is pretty much the same. The plastic cover is a different shape. That's the furthest I'm taking you into the switch. Now I'll show you how to put everything back together. And I'm going to assume you did everything I did in the video. Place the speaker back in and push its wires into the slit. Then put the cover back on and place its screw back into this hole. Next, put the green board back into place. That's easier said than done because of all the various ribbons that are going to be fed into the connectors. The topmost one is the fan. So if you've already removed that, don't worry about that connector yet. Those ribbons have to be fed over the side of the board as you put it into place. It took me a long time to get it just right. Once the board is in place, connect the ribbons. All of those, except for the speaker ones, have a locking tab. The speaker ones just need to be pushed into place. Then place the screws back in. Place the fan back into place and put these three screws back into it. Then connect the ribbon. If you removed the charging rail and you took it all the way apart, hold the electronics part of it in place and push the pin back into the hole. I advise against putting your finger on the other side of that hole as I did here because I ended up pushing the pin a little bit too far and it almost went into my finger like a shot. Then place the rail back on and put these two screws back into it. Connect the cables that went to the rails Put the pipe back on. Put both ends of it down simultaneously so you don't bend it. And put these screws back in. Next, you're going to put the black board back into place. There is a connector on the bottom of it that snaps into a connector on the green board that's underneath it. You'll know when you have it placed properly because you'll feel it clamp into place. Put this screw back into place and put the little sticker back onto it if you still have it. Put the battery back into place and push its connector straight down until it snaps into place. Put the metal back on. And put these screws back into it. Now put these wires back into place. It's hard to get them exactly like they were before you peeled the tape off, but here's the before picture, so use that as your guide. Snap the connectors for those wires into place. Place the back back on. Use your tri-wing screwdriver to put these two screws back into place. And then put back these two screws, which were on the bottom. There was one on the top as well. And then one more screw goes into each side. I hope you found this video helpful, and I welcome you to watch some of my other tutorials, which are on the screen right now. Thank you for watching.